So let's now combine zeros and poles. So combining zeros and poles. Remember the zeros. What they do is, so we've got this omega zero here, that they are creating a very shallow dip in the frequency response here. So that's our omega, and this was our E2 J omega. So they are creating a damping, damping of omega zero. And so the pole, on the other hand, does the opposite. So if we have here omega, and again we have got omega zero here, E2, E2, J omega. So then the pole does, interestingly, just the opposite. So the pole creates a resonance here at this point. Resonance at omega zero. And obviously, both zeros and poles, they are both complex conjugate. conjugate poles and zeros. So both second order. So the question is now is obviously what happens if we combine them? So what's happening then actually? Okay, so let's do that. So let's write down the full transfer function. So poles and zeros combined. And this gives us the following transfer function. So one minus two cosine omega zero z to minus one plus z to minus two because we've got no r here and then this is one minus two r cosine omega zero z to minus one plus r square z to minus two so this gives us a combined transfer function here. And um, so the data flow diagram becomes also a bit more complicated with that. So, so we need to have a summation node at the input. And then we need to have two delay steps. So we know that. And then, then the one delay step here feeds back to the input here. And we know that this negative sign in this case goes away, so this gives us two cosine omega zero in the multiplication of this pathway here. Then the delayed version here by two time, time steps, this subtracts r square. So in this case we are multiplying this here with minus r square. And so then the so then on the other hand, the output here is calculated by the following time steps. Um, so we so we could, so the output, we could use this signal here and have a second delay step here, but we're just recycling the same delays again. So here we have our original signal, undelayed signal here. This is going to the output. Also the two time steps delayed signal go straight to the output and is summed up here. So it's our summation at the output. And then we know that this bit in the middle here, this is multiplied by two cosine omega zero, but with a negative sign here, nearly forgotten that, because in this case, the negative sign won't go away. 
And so the other two are just not multiplied, just added up. So that's our output here. So that's our input. And that's our output. And that's our complete filter here. So that's a second order IIR filter. And the question, the interesting question is now how does this filter behave? So let's just put all these coefficients now into into Octave MATLAB to see how this works. So we know that that we have here this um, Octave MATLAB. So we know that we have a combination of, of a shallow zero here. So that's our omega that's our omega zero and this is here our h of e to j omega and at the same time we have a resonance here which is sitting on the same place here so this is generate, generated by our zero this is generated by our pole so let's start here again let's set our omega zero to pi quarter and our r to o point nine and let's see what we are getting out there in in matlab here um, or octave okay let's let's write down the transfer function here on the side and we have it again here that we see it while i'm typing this in here so h of z is one minus cosine omega zero z to minus one plus z to minus 2 divided by 1 minus 2r cosine omega 0 z to minus 1 plus r square z to minus 2. So that's our transfer function here just to have it here sitting in the corner. And now we need to populate our, our A's and B's here. And so the so the B are our FIR coefficients here. So that's one and then minus two times cosine of omega zero. And then the next term is one. So that's our our B term and then the A's are our recursive here. That's one and that's um, 2 times r and then cosine of omega 0 and then here that's at the back it's r square and bracket so so now we just can can use our frequency z command here and then we just plot that so let's see what we are getting here and so we see here that we are getting a function here which is damping. So now let's um, increase our R here just to see what this does. So imagine now we, we turn this to 0.9. We know that this is increasing the resonance here. And um, we're going through the whole through the calculation here again. So as B won't count. So A and then creating our new frequency response and plotting this. And so now we see that with R equals 0.9, we are suddenly getting a very, very strong damping here. And it looks like a proper band stop filter here with a pretty narrow frequency response here. So that's, that's a very surprising result here that um, this resonance is no longer showing up as a resonance but this is basically making just this filter steeper here. So let's do this even even a bit a bit more dramatic here that we say R is 0.99 and creating a new frequency response and plotting that. So now we see here with um, with a factor of 0.99. So we're very very close to the unit circle here with our resonance. 
getting a very narrow very narrow damping here and um, and it's a like a proper stop button filter here so the surprising result is that this function here this function for r close close to close to 1 produces produces a band stop filter <laughs> 